Hey everybody, I'm Charlie Craven, and today I'm going to tie for you a pattern that I'm just super excited about. Um, this is Eric Paramore's Thunder Thighs Hopper. Um, and this is a fly that I have fished before, but I have not, uh, or had not, tied before. And uh, um, I, I have to admit to you, I was making it a little more complicated and then a little too simple. Um, you know, the sort of mind games that you play with yourself as you... Uh, have a new uh, new pattern that you're trying to trying to learn, and uh, I uh, called Eric up and and he gave me some tips and uh, tips and tricks for how to put this thing together, and I think I finally now got it, um, and I'm super excited about it. It's just such a cool little hopper pattern, um, you know, entirely synthetic, um, big poly yarn wing, poly macrame yarn wing, um, those super realistic hopper legs. Um, gosh, they're just makes such a great profile uh, foam body. Um, that angle there from the bottom is just just unbeatable. That is a hopper profile for sure. Um, so I am super excited about this fly and uh, uh, I want to thank Eric for uh, his patience with me and uh, all his help in uh, putting this uh, this video together. Uh, so as I get started here, what the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take this fly out of the vise and I'm going to uh, hold up this piece of foam here. What I've got here uh, this one happens to be tan and peach, but these are uh, two pieces of two millimeter foam um, that have been glued together in a sheet. And I've got you know several different colors here, but um, here's yellow and tan. Um, and you can glue these together with Zappa Gap, although uh, uh, 3M's Super 77 seems to work a bit better. Um, and what you want to do is make uh, a couple sheets of the of the different uh, uh, combinations of foam. Um, before you sit down to tie, let that dry. I usually try to do that the day before. Um, put something heavy on top of it and uh, let it dry, and it'll, uh, you know, even contacts in it will work fairly well. It just smells, but um, you can see how I've, I've got that sandwiched together. Um, so once you've got that, what you want to do is you want to go in, cut along the edge, um, and cut some, some strips, uh, slices, to make the hopper legs out of. And that's what I've got here. Um, and so what I'm going to do with this is, um, this one is peach and tan. This is not the one that we're going to use. This is just what was handy on my desk. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a long bladed pair of scissors and I'm going to cut a long angle like so to sort of form that hopper leg. That's all there is to that. That's the thigh of the hopper. Um, that's a very simple little move. Um, this is one of those flies that... Uh, yeah, you know, by the time you get done with it, you realize how simple it is, and uh, I just love stuff like that that comes out, um, you know, so good but still simple. Um, you know, where you don't have to fight with it. Um, just a cool, cool fly. So uh, I don't generally get excited about flies, and especially foam hoppers, because I've got several of my own. But uh, this one's a cool one that has found a place in my box just, uh, just based on the cool factor. Uh, so to build these legs, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that piece of foam, and I don't typically clamp it in my vise. I've, I've clamped it in my vise so that you can see it. Um, usually I'll just sort of hold it in my fingers and, and sort of use both hands to do this. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a strand of small sexy floss, and this is tan, um, tan barred sexy floss. And you could use, you know, obviously whatever color you want. And I'm going to tie an overhand knot at it, like so. Um, and when you look at this knot, you can see one side will kind of kick out one side, one side will kick out the other side. Uh, depending on what leg you're going to tie, as far as the right or the left, I'm going to put the knot on my near side. And I, you can see I'll kind of tighten that down slowly um, at about 45 degrees, like so. Right up near the tip, and then I'll tighten that down tight. And that forms our hopper leg. Now, um, one thing to uh, not get thrown off by. See how there's a little curve in that leg? Um, that's actually the curve in the in the material, not so much the uh, from the knot. But what I want to do is cut off the the other side of the knot, and then I got pretty close to the end there. But you could always nick that off a bit. And what I end up with is this cool little hopper leg that's got a little kick out to the side. Uh, so you're going to make one for the little, one for the right and one for the left, um, and that is how you go about that. Um, for the, uh, this is going to be a left leg on this hopper. Uh, for the right leg, you would tie the, the knot with the, uh, the other end going through the, the overhand. 
Um, so you, it takes a little playing with, but uh, um, honestly, I don't know that it makes a huge difference in the finished fly. Those legs are going to kick around in the water, so they're not going to sit very still anyway. So um, ideally, we want them a little kicked out to the sides or at least straight. Um, we don't want them pointing straight down or straight back. Uh, so that's how you make the leg. So I'm going to take that leg and set it aside because I'll use that. Um, and then I'm going to grab here on my desk uh, TMCO 5262. Um, so this is a Two extra long, two extra heavy nymph hook, um, which might seem like a, an odd one uh, for um, for a hopper pattern. But uh, Eric and I actually talked about this a bit, um, and and the advantage of this heavier hook is is twofold. Um, when you catch a, a bigger fish, this hook won't straighten out, which is uh, you know paramount. We don't want it to do that. Um, but also that heavier hook helps. Uh, uh, this sort of you know heavily dressed fly, the fly that's got a lot of materials on top of the shank, helps this heavily heavily dressed fly land hook point down or uh, you know right side up. Um, so so don't be especially on foam patterns, don't be thrown off by tying them on on heavier wire hooks. That's totally um, you know desirable in in many cases. Um, so I'm going to tie you a, a, a peach and tan version here. So I'm going to use in this case some A dot Vivas in pink. Um, and you can tie these in all sorts of colors. That one I just showed you was tan and brown. Uh, here's a yellow and tan. Um, you know, all all variety of colors. And it's been pretty fun to kind of sit down and knock out a few different different versions. But I'm going to start that ADOT just behind the eye. And I want to make a nice, smooth, even thread base all the way back to the bend of the hook. So that my thread hangs about even with the point on the barb. Um, once I get there, what I want to do is put just a little dab, let me try to spread out just a bit, I'm going to cord that back up, just a little dab, just tiny little drop of super glue there on the bend of the hook. Um, and that's going to help to hold my body in place. Um, now what I've got here is a pre-made body um, cut out with a punch, and this is a, uh, a River Roads Round End Chernobyl Cutter. Um, now the catch on this is with the with the cutter, um, it's only going to cut the body about yay long. And so what you need to do is cut further away from the edge of the foam and then square these front edges off with a razor blade. And if you are careful, you can do it pretty easily um, and get a nice smooth body like that. Um, so what I want to do here, um, a couple things. Um, the first thing I want to do in preparation for the head, and this is sort of uh, coming from experience the last uh, week or so that I've been tying these, is I want to kind of pinch that front end down. That'll compress that foam, makes it just a little softer um, so that when I get to the head part where I'm going to fold that foam, uh, it'll compress a little bit easier. Then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take and measure this this rounded end of the foam um, against the hook so it's about a half shank long. And I just kind of use my thumbnail to pinch it there. You can see it just makes a, a small little indentation. And then I'll set that spot right down on top of that glue. I'm going to tie that down with four turns. One right over the top of the other. And then I want to square that on the hook and make sure that that is straight up and down. All right. So now to get the extended body part of this fly, what I want to do is reel my thread in. So I've got a fairly short working length and I'm going to cross up the end of the body on top and form that segment with a few vertical turns. Then I'll cross again and form another segment. Let me get my fingers out of the way and you can kind of see what I've done there. Um, now I'm going to cross my thread back over the top. And you can see I'm working the thread back and forth between my material hand and my thread hand as needed. And then finish with a couple more turns there up on the shank. Um, so what I've done is I've created that cross hatched section um, and then the extended body portion of the fly here at the, out at the back. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this foam up and I'm going to bump my thread about a third of a shank length forward. And I'll fold that down around the hook and tie that down with three or four turns. Another third. Tie it down again. And then for the final section, I'm going to bump this hook down in my vise just a bit here. For the final section, I want to stop the thread just short of the hook eye. Um, I don't want to get too close to the hook eye here. And I'll build that final segment there. And again, three or four turns. So we've got 
everything tied on top of the hook and we, you can see our two-tone uh, right there for the body. So now for the wing I'm going to take some white polypropylene macrame yarn and I take a pretty good tuft. I like to fish this fly as a dry dropper fly um, and white is the easiest color to see um, um, but I, I tend to tie the wing a little bit on the heavy side. Um, you can certainly do it a little bit more sparsely um, and you can do it with more natural colors if uh, uh, you're trying to be, be more hopper specific. Um, but in this case, I'm going to tie this down at the center of its length there and then just bring my thread in front of it. And it'll kind of sit split for a minute and that's okay. So now I'm going to take about a 2x2 two two millimeter piece of orange foam. This is going to become my indicator. So I'll just fold this yarn back and I'm going to catch this foam in that segment, that last segment where we tied everything down, right up on top of the wing. Now, I don't need that, that foam to be that long, but I don't want to cut it off to, to length just yet, so I'll leave it a little long there. And now, this is one of the coolest parts of this fly, um, and credit goes to Eric for this. To make the eyes and the head on this fly, he's got a, a cool little trick. Um, I've got about a one and a half by two millimeter piece of, of black foam here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this over. You've got to have a piece that's long enough that you can pinch both ends. I'm going to fold this over the foam. And then I'm going to push the head out beyond the hook eye. And I'm going to pull on the foam and pinch that in place. And then I will tie that down with a few turns right there. And just cinch that down good and tight right on top. So we've got our foam sticking out the sides. Um, now what you'll want to do is come in and trim this foam off, just flush. Don't pull on it when you go to trim it. Um, it'll tuck back inside. And I'm going to trim it off flush on each side, and you can see how that creates a perfect little hopper eye, uh, which is pretty darn crafty, so kudos to Eric for that one. Um, good idea. Now I'm going to take this extra piece of foam here and trim that off flush. And all of our tie down from, from here on out is in this little space right here. Uh, so we've got a fairly narrow area to work in. Um, and before I get too far along, what I want to do is trim this wing, um, usually just about even with the bend of the hook. And then I can come in and trim my foam indicator down just a bit shorter as well. Like so. Kind of lift all that, that yarn up on top. So now I'm going to take my pre-made hopper leg that I made earlier. And I'm going to take one, and if it's uh, kicking out to one side or the other, I always try to get them to kick out from the fly. And what I'll do is I'm going to measure this against, doesn't matter which side you do first, but what I'm going to do is measure that knee just up to about the bend of the hook. And I'll lay that in place against the far side of the hook and catch it with a couple turns. Like so. And I'll pick up my other leg. And I'll measure that knee so that it's even with the first. And I'll tie it in place with a couple turns. Like so. You can see that those legs are kicking out away from the body. And then I'll come in and trim this foam off flush, these little stub ends. Trim those off flush. Just tuck your scissors right in there and you can see how you have a pretty clean tie-off area because that foam compresses so nicely. Now for the front legs, and I think this is one of the cool things about this fly, is it's got the front legs um, which really contribute to that uh, uh, overall profile. And I'm going to take a piece of that same small sexy floss and I'm going to tie it in along my near side and cross back so that I've tied it across this band of space that we've got here. So it's not just tied down in a V, it's got a little space in between. I'll cut that to length and then I can use the other half of this on the far side in the same kind of move. So I've got widespread X legs like so. Now the final little step here is we're going to take a little bit of dubbing um, and in the case of this, this peach colored one, I use Hendrickson Pink Superfine Dubbing. There's any variety of dubbing you could use. It's probably not a huge deal either way. Um, but this matches up kind of nicely. And I'm going to dub this down nice and tight. Um, and really this dubbing is just to cover that thread work. So I'm going to put that on tight. I'll hold my legs back out of the way. And I'm going to use this dubbing to cover that tie down. like so. Now when I get ready to whip finish, you can whip finish right here behind the head. You can sometimes get lucky and tuck it in uh, right in behind that uh, 
uh, last rapid dubbing. But what I like to do is push this head up a bit and slide my thread up between the hook eye and the body of the fly, just, just tucked up in there. And you can see that elevates the head just a bit. And then I'll set up my whip finisher and hold that head back out of the way and kind of work from the bottom to tie my whip finish around the hook shank. And I can come in and trim that thread out, square my legs back up, like so. I'm going to trim those front legs a bit shorter. And the best reference I can give you for that is make them look like hopper, hopper legs. They're a little, little shorter on the front end. And then the super floss ends of the back legs, I'll trim about two-thirds the length of the foam, uh, of the foam thigh, I should say. Kind of lift everything up. You can kind of tweak those legs out a little bit if you, if you like. Got a weird piece of yarn back here. We'll get that one out of there. And then one final little step that you want to do is I'll take this hook and just put it in the vise upside down. Uh, typically, I'll, do, I'll just put these on my, on my desk um, and do these all at once once I'm done tying. But come in and put a bead of Zappa Gap or Super Glue down the bottom of the body uh, along that thread, uh, along those thread tie downs, just to anchor everything in place. And I'll even let some sort of bleed into that dubbing just to anchor everything in place. And then I'm going to very carefully turn this right side up in the vise. Bring it back down here for you to peruse. Let's get our focus a little better here. And that is Eric Paramore's Thunder Thighs Hopper. This is, gosh, just such a cool fly. Um, I haven't, uh, haven't been as impressed with the fly in a long time as I have been with this one. Um, just really cool design. Super hoppery profile. Um, Really fun to tie. You know, it was, a, it was a challenging fly. That's one of the cool things about uh, uh, writing the article for the magazine and doing these videos is I get to tie a lot of different stuff. And, um, you know, very often it's stuff that I wouldn't necessarily think of to tie myself. But uh, um, I always learn something. And uh, this is definitely one that's kind of taught me a few tricks. As much as I've tied with foam, uh, Eric's taught me a few little little tricks on this one too. But super cool fly. Eric Paramore's Thunder Thighs Hopper. Um, Tie some up and put them in your box. I know these work. I have fished them. I haven't got to tie them yet, but um, I'll tell you, I've got uh, a pile of them that I've whipped up. This is just what I've done this afternoon, a whole handful of them. Um, that is a good fly. I'm going to use every last one of those and uh, probably tie even more. So um, thanks for watching. I hope that was as fun for you as it was for me. Thunder Thighs Hopper. I'm Charlie Craven.